big one. Nice fish. Golly, what a toad. That's a good one, buddy. Whoo. Come on in here, big daddy. That's such a textbook situation. We've got a little sandbar and then a feather, feathering uh, flat of grass, and then it actually has a hard edge to it. And what I'm doing is I'm just using my electronics to stay right on that outside edge and taking and, and dropping that jig vertically into that grass. Kind of difficult sometimes for some anglers simply because you can't see the grass edge. You have to use your electronics to stay on it, but very, very productive. That's a nice one. That's a good fish, man. Boy, fish are just loaded on this grass line. Right on that edge is a solid, just a solid. There's no more, no better way to pattern these fish than this way. When you dial in and you know exactly what depth and how far off that grass line to pick that bait, you can almost call your shot. You know, when you have these large grass flats like this, you know, obviously later in the year, the fish do tend to focus on this outside area. They'll kind of, you know, group up. And in the morning, you can catch them on a topwater bait, but once that sun gets really bright and intense, they tend to, to, to get down in the grass, and usually you can't catch them very well until evening time. This, this jig technique, by dropping this jig in this grass, you're kind of going into their, their midday lair, and it's a really good way um, a good way to catch those midday fish. Gives you an alternative. You know, one thing that I always pay particular attention to is the type of vegetation I'm fishing. Obviously, you get into some areas that have mixtures of vegetation, and some lakes will have more of one type than another, but a lot of times you'll find one specific type of vegetation is holding the bass. Maybe it's milfoil, maybe it's hydrilla, peppergrass, but it's basically a pattern within a pattern. A lot of anglers go out and they just fish grass as a whole and they don't try and really dial in what type of grass the fish are in. I've found a lot of times that bass will be specifically in peppergrass because it grows on a sandy bottom and the fish are gravitating towards that, or possibly milfoil because it's growing in more of a mucky bottom. Something like that might make a difference. Pay attention to what type of grass you catch every fish out of, and a lot of times you can develop a, a pattern within a pattern when you're grass fishing. Man, they're on that bass. Look at that skinny one. He's got black spots on him. Boy, they get it too. Really important in this type of fishing to use a jig with a big hook. You know, you, you can use a heavy rod, heavy line. I'm using 25 pound monofilament line. You can use heavy line and heavy rod, but it's only really as good as the last link to the fish, and that's the hook. I try and use about a four to a five aught big round bend hook. So when I get them, I get a lot of flesh and I can tear them out of that grass. I mean, this is no time to be playing with them. You can play with them once you get them out away from the grass line. But that initial set, hook set, you got to really snatch their head up out of that grass because if they get you around a clump, you can lose them. Yeah, that's one thing about flipping grass. It'll sure make a mess out of your boat. No doubt. <laughs> but it's rewarding. You also need to pay particular attention to how heavy of a head you use with your jig or how heavy of a sinker you use with your, your Texas rig when you're flipping this vegetation. The head needs to be heavy enough to help the bait penetrate the mat, but not so heavy that it falls too fast. And a lot of times, if you have a very heavy mat, you have to use maybe a three quarter or one ounce uh, weight to get through it which makes that bait fall very fast. What I'll do is I'll pitch that bait up on that mat of grass and I'll hop it and as soon as it starts to pop through, I'll slow the descent of the bait with my rod tip. Just kind of feather that bait to the bottom so I've still got that heavy weight to get the bait through, but I can slowly feed it down to the bottom and get that, that subtle fall that I need. Very important not to just drop your rod and let the bait punch through.
right on the edge of that grass too. Boy, they just love that jig. I mean, you pop it out of a clump of that grass. Now that one was more of a distinct thump. And I picked up, felt pressure, and let him have it. Pretty fit. That will work. You know, the depth can vary significantly on this technique. You know, you can have a grass line like I'm fishing here that, that is, is as shallow as two to three feet falling into five or six, or you may have a tapering grass line that comes out to 12 or 14 and breaks into 25. It all depends on the lake, the water clarity, and the type of vegetation that you're fishing. But basically, the same premise applies. Stay on the edge, whether you're visually looking at it or whether you're looking at your electronics to stay on the edge. It's critical. And what I'll do with my electronics when I can't see the grass, I'll keep my trolling or be looking at my electronics and I'll keep my trolling motor on a low constant speed and I'll zigzag back and forth. When I hit the grass, I'll turn back out. When I hit the open water, I turn back in. And that little zigzagging pattern keeps me right on the edge of the grass line where I need to be. You know, there's a lot of times where the hot spot in the grass, where 90% of the bites will occur on a whole grass line, is the size of the front deck of your boat. So it is critical that when you get a bite, especially a sizable fish, that you drop a marker buoy right on that spot. GPS coordinates and saving the spot is great for getting back into the area day to day, but pinpoint placement is critical to be able to get into that spot and stay where you need to be and catch all those fish. You know, one of the biggest things that can hamper you on a situation like this is the wind. Uh, it is a pretty detailed technique that you have to stay on those grass lines and, and really present that bait vertically. And if you get much more than a slight chop, it becomes very difficult to stay on those lines and get that bait to drop the way you need it to drop. I like calm, slick, bright, sunny days or just a light ripple at best. Something like this is just perfect, but much more than that, it starts to get difficult to get the bait down to where it needs to be. Days that are typically toughest for other types of lures, fast moving baits are best for this, just that high, bright, sunny, cold, post-cold frontal conditions, high, bright blue skies, the things that you just hate for bass fishing, A1 for this technique right here. That one was right in one of those little clumps of grass that set out off the main grass line. I saw it and pitched that jig in there. That milfoil and kind of cabbage mix is what they most of these fish have been in. You know, a lot of times you won't even feel a strike. On that occasion, I pitched that jig in there, and I, I, I let it hit the grass clump, and I shook it, and it fell through the grass clump, and I picked up, and it was just heavy. And I, and I set the hook on weight. I think a lot of anglers misconstrue that, you know, a lot of times they think that they're going to get a, a real bone-jarring bone strike or thump like they would with a plastic worm. A lot of times when you're dropping a jig vertical like this, you just get pressure. It feels like kind of like a wet dishcloth on the end of your line or a clump of moss or something. You feel pressure, by golly, set the hook. I kind of use like, about a, like a little three-step approach. I'll, I'll pitch my bait to the, to, or flip my bait, either one, to the outside edge and try and get the aggressive one. As my boat's moving along, if I don't get a bite, then I'll pitch it a little further in, maybe two to three feet inside the grass. And, and then a third one further back in and kind of just as a, like a pie, just kind of work my way in and out, back and forth, fanning along the, along the grass edge. And once you figure out whether, where they're inside, outside, in the middle, then you can really dial in and, and knock their socks off. You may wonder why I continue to emphasize the importance of staying on the edge when you're fishing this vertical technique. Remember, bass are ambush feeders. They like to lay where there's a lot of food, and that outer edge of that grass is a highway for food. They can lay in the stalks of the grass and come out to ambush anything that swims along. It will really eliminate a lot of looking if you stay on those edges. You know, from a tournament angling perspective, this is an excellent way to catch a kicker fish, but I do notice that, you know, my emotions start to play on me if I don't have a limit in the live well. You know, a faster moving technique, top water, spinnerbait, something like that in the morning, followed up by pitching the jig on the grass line in the afternoon can really generate a good stringer. Get a limit early, come out here, and spend the rest of the time to get that kicker fish.